Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today we're going to do some shop maintenance. Some of you may remember this 1917 AB drill press I restored. I'm really pleased with the outcome on the drill press. But I put a motor on it that I got really cheap. I got a whole pile full of motors for a hundred bucks. And out of those motors, I got one for my metal lathe and one for this drill press and uh, one on my CBN grinder. But anyway, a hundred bucks wasn't a bad deal on that. Had to do a little work on them. But this one is a repulsion induction as opposed to a capacitor start. And on a repulsion induction, they've got various different ways of engaging and disengaging brushes to make them start. And this one has a centrifugal clutch. Well, they're all centrifugal, but it's, it pulls the brushes away from the commutator. And I'm no motor expert, but we're going to get into this motor and see what's wrong with it. It's uh, basically just not starting well. It, and I don't know if I can duplicate it now. It'll probably start perfect because I'm trying to demonstrate it. But <laughs> did you hear that hesitation before it went into drive, into full speed? That's where the brushes are not pulling back good. Sometimes it hesitates for a long period of time. It started instantly that time. Anyway, it's been something kind of annoying me, and we're going to address that. So of course, first thing to do is unplug it. And I think after that I'll disconnect this wire on the motor. No wiring diagram on this. In fact, the motor plate is missing, and I'm not even sure who makes the motor. Yeah, that helps. This is an old motor. It's not super old, but it's still heavy. It's, I'm guessing, a 1950 maybe. Repulsion induction used to be very popular. It's a good, good way to start a motor. But I think they had more problems with the start mechanisms, so they went to capacitor start. Capacitor start is probably cheaper. Just speculating. I'm no motor expert. Okay, I cleaned this motor up, but I don't know if I've ever been into the inside of it or not. When I restored the drill press, I was in a hurry to get it going. I probably just painted the outside of this. But these old motors, the start mechanism is usually, well, not always, I wouldn't say usually, but a lot of times that's the problem with them. I noticed down here there's some scribe marks to line up the motor. So when you take it apart, you can rotate them to the right place. I don't know if it's critical or not, but I'm going to make sure they're visible.
Well, a lot of times you have to do like this. But it, well, this one was fairly, fairly easy to get apart. And it may not even be this end that I got to get apart. I don't really know. Like I said, I'm no expert. There's a temperature overload there. I believe that's what it is. I believe we can pull it out the other side and fix it. Okay, this is important to note right here. Right here you've got a prong that goes into the brush bracket. that stops this from rotating. So when we put it back together we'll have to line that up real carefully. Probably should have cleaned up that shaft on that end a little bit. Probably got a keyway or a set screw booger on it. smooth except for that. Not positive that's what it was. There we go. Yeah, I guess that's what it was. Okay, here is your centrifugal weights. They fly out like that. And when it does, pushes the brushes away from the commutator. For some reason it was binding. Feels really free right now. I'm wondering if it was where it went into this thing right here. That keyway kind of thing. Because that's really free. It's got like push rods that go through it. And just push it away like that. Well, I don't know what's causing the problem. Well, I, I put the end cap on here. And, and there's a, the, I call it a key to stop the brushes from rotating. And I noticed when I activated the brushes to pull away, I don't know if you can see that one brush is still engaged. It's not supposed to be. And that's probably the problem. You can probably see it without this cap on there. working now, but with the... Oh, I see. The cap obstructs it from pulling back any further, and that stays engaged. So I don't know. Doesn't really look in the best shape, but...
I'll bet that fixes it. What I did is I tightened the, uh, it's got a braided wire goes between the two brushes and it's got like a little knot in it to take up the slack between them. I just twist it a little bit tighter. Makes the brush pull back with the bracket. I don't know if that's the right way to fix it or if that's a permanent way to fix it, but I'll bet it works. Usually it's the other way around. The brush doesn't engage well enough. But in this case, it's not pulling back good enough. Let's try putting the end cap on there and see if, it, see if the brush disengages. Perfectly every time. I'll bet that fixes it. Hopefully permanently, but I don't really know. I didn't, it doesn't look like I was ever into this motor. It doesn't look very clean. But I'm not going to clean it up. I'm just going to put it back together and see what it does. Nothing else, these scribe lines you put on here make these bolts go through. This, this problem with the motor is probably the problem, the reason I got it. Looks like a fairly simple fix, hopefully. It's probably why it was in that pile of motors I got for a hundred dollars. Smart thing to do would be to try this on the bench. But I feel confident it's going to work, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it. where that was. Not much room in that cover. Well, let's try it without mounting it first. Well, seems to be working good. Yeah, I got this pulley just a little bit out of line. Okay, let's give it a try. Yeah, here it goes. Nothing. Yeah. Hey, let's plug it in first. Well, let's give it a try. I like it. Well, that about wraps it up. 
I encourage anybody that has any one of these repulsion induction motors to just take it apart and see what makes it tick. It's uh, usually something common sense inside. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.